we have to wish um, my guy or our guy, Brendan Schaub, a happy birthday. It was his birthday the other day, wasn't it, right? So big up Brendan Schaub, 40 years old. It's a my big, big milestone in most people's, you know, um, life and whatnot. And considering everything this guy's been through, I think it'll be a good time to celebrate the guy and just say, you know what? You may be a bit of a redact. You may have disappointed people, myself included, being a former fan. And you are really, really annoying and maybe a closet narcissist or maybe a full-blown narcissist. But on this day, your special day, we're going to celebrate it. We're going to say happy birthday to Brendan Shaw. Okay? So everybody in the comments, everybody in the chat, join along with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Brandon. Happy birthday to you. That's my impression of Chin, by the way. Crying, singing. <laughs> okay? That was my tribute. That was my cosplay as Brendan. Singing happy birthday to be sure. But yeah, big up him. It's his birthday. We love to see it. Big up the big B Shorb. And he decided to post something regarding his big special day. He has some very profound, some very profound thoughts regarding his special day and how life is basically looking for him going forward. I'm going to play for you in a minute. Let me just reload the chat on the screen here because it kind of unloaded. Let's go again here. This is Brendan Shaw kind of telling us his feelings and how it feels to be 40 now. The big four zero. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see what the big man has to say. It's a little B-Day Saturday, actually. Woke up at five. Boy, got 15 miles in this morning. Headed back now. Watch the fights with the fam. Uh, probably go to the fish store. Make into some saltwater tank action. And then uh, maybe go to Cinnabon. I don't know if I have time. I see all the love, uh, all the tech, speedy love. Love you guys. Uh, that's it. Boy's getting old. Boy's getting older. I. Probably got about eight solid years left. Name the biggest grandpa you know with full sleeve tattoos and cauliflower. Played tackle football since he was six. Found the UFC and then does stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not sad at all. <laughs> so, interesting video, right? Um, breathing heavily uh after a 15 mile bike ride allegedly on an e-bike is hilarious i don't know if any of you guys have used e-bikes but we have uh i'm sure most metropolitan cities have this the flipping free e-bikes that you get not not free but the ones that you can basically pay for by the hour or whatnot and those ones aren't that great but if those ones aren't that great but they're still incredibly easy to use very fast. They get from A to B super quickly and you have to use much of your actual cardio to get them going. I can only imagine how amazing actual e-bikes are, like the ones that you buy, like the mountain bike ones, like the actual sick ones. They must be like fucking mopeds. So the fact that he's breathing heavily, riding an e-bike um, on a trail for 15 miles is hilarious, especially when you consider how much distance you can cover on an e-bike. Is legitimately makes me laugh. That's so Brendan to be like, you know, pretending he's out of breath riding an e-bike. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's basically a legal motor. Anyway, whatever. It's funny just in terms of figuratively looking at it, him turning 40 and the fact that he's now doing this video in a way to kind of look like he's being philosophical, like he's trying to kind of, you know, um, take a riff, to, you know, take some stock of his life and how things have kind of transpired over time and whatnot and doing what, you know, what a lot of guys like to do, like what I do mostly on my birthday because I hate celebrating my birthday. I've always have. Maybe there's some traumas there, but for the most part, the most thing I do is I maybe rack up a couple of lines and have a glass of whiskey. That's it. And I just kind of keep it moving. But I have no, you know, idea or no need to be like, you know, having a meal with people. or do, I don't care. Leave me alone. But there is this sort of like idealistic idea of having your birthday where you literally pour yourself a glass of champagne and you just toss yourself like here's to another year. I made it and keep it kind of moving. So he's basically trying to do the same sort of thing, right? But obviously he's doing it only because his number one choice got you know, scrapped last minute. So he wanted to, 
the thing that he wanted to do was he wanted to go to um, Joe Rogan's and do a fight companion, right? But that didn't work out because Jamie allegedly, young Jamie, allegedly has some golfing that suddenly turned up and they couldn't do it no more. My theory is that Rogan realised it was coming up and was like, oh, he couldn't be bothered. And now the comedy club is popping. He'd much rather spend every time, because again, Rogan's very regimented, the same way that I am in terms of like, you know, we like to do our things the way we like to do our things. But also the things that we like to do, we double down on them. So I'm sure now Rogan, if he's not doing jujitsu, if he's not working out, if he's not recording a podcast, not with his family, he's in that club. Like there's only certain places that you can find Rogan or maybe Archery Place, wherever it may be. So he, he's probably spending every free time that he has in his comedy club because why wouldn't you? You've got your own fucking comedy club. So I think he realized, he was like, oh shit, I agreed to this shit before the comedy club was open. Now it's open. I don't want to do it anymore. And he basically laid the blame on Jamie. So then the fight companion could happen because if you remember the video clip of it, right? I may actually insert it later when I upload the clip on here. But the video clip of it, Brendan is super enthusiastic because I think Rogan's, I think he's like, oh, it's my birthday. And Rogan's like, oh, that's a, that's a shame. He's like, no, that's a good thing. I can come with you guys. I want to be with you guys. I don't want to be with my family. I want to be with you guys. Basically, he was, he was waiting for an opportunity to get away from them and he did. And of course, it got scuppered. And then suddenly he turned into family man. Oh, my family have got plans with me, blah, 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 blah. So it's hilarious that now he's trying to use the spin and try to make it seem like this is his plan when really his plan was to be with Rogan and the boys. But, you know, it kind of is what it is. But still, four is a big milestone for the guy, I think, all things considered. And it does have to be said. I think mean, I've said it many times here. And I think I relate the same sort of thing with DSP, Dark Side Feel, and even Wings of Redemption, those kind of guys. I have to be honest and say, as much as I dislike the guy now, and it's really disappointing to see what he's turned out to be especially being that i was a really big fan of the fire and the kid when it was on fox like i loved it special k evan the beard that era for me was peak the fire and the kid i listened to it all the time especially when i used to work retail like you know working retail working in a stock room stacking up boxes of dr martins or nikes or any that's wherever i was and just like hating my life having the ability to laugh and joke around and kind of listen to these guys in the background was amazing i used to love it and i actually put loads of people on i remember there would be times i have my phone out without headphones so i could like hear and i'd have it out and guys would be popping in or girls and they would hear it and they'd be like oh what's that and i'd put them on so i don't you know like they were that good you'd actually be listening to it out loud and people be like oh my god man that sounds really cool so it's really sucky to see what he's turned into i have to give the guy credit dsp the same way their resilience and their ability to just keep on going keep putting themselves forward keep doing podcasts keep doing stand-up despite everybody and again in the Brendan thing, forget us, forget the viewers or the haters or the homeless cats or the people that don't matter, right? Forget us. His peers are mocking him to his face, laughing, making comments, death by a thousand cuts, all this sort of stuff. Imagine how bad that, that would make you feel day to day. Fair enough, the, the haters, you, you can dismiss them. They're not as rich as you. They don't fuck chigs, whatever. All this sort of stuff, they're jealous, blah. But you can dismiss that easily. But when it's your own peers, some of whom are way, way more successful than you are, way richer than you are, way more established than you are and respected, when they're laughing at you and, tell, and basically saying you're a joke and taking the piss out, all this sort of stuff, but you're still putting yourself forward, that says a lot. That resilience, that temperament, that might actually be the reason why he's become successful in this field. Because maybe in the, in the other field, with football, you kind of quit because it wasn't working out. With the UFC, he quit because it wasn't working out. But the one thing he did stick with, despite all the haters and bad comments, was that. <laughs> Eve in the comments, okay, even the comments just like killed me. Eve, it's not resilience, it's narcissism. All right, cool. <laughs> Maybe you're right. I'm trying to give this guy his flowers, Eve. It's his birthday, okay? I'm trying to give the guy his flowers and tell him, give him some credit. It's Brendan's birthday. For once, let's just be nice, okay? I call it resilience. Um, I call it determination. That's what I call it. Persistence. All these things. And I think, like I said before, like I'm about to end, the one field of his area where he did do it and he stuck with it, he's been rewarded for it. And this is why he lives this amazing life he lives, where he gets to fuck chicks and drive nice cars and do great things. So great to him. Amazing and credit to the guy. Even though it's a bit sad that he's on this hill by himself, you know, at an age of 40, it maybe it's a bit of a representation of kind of where he's at in life. Who knows? But let's read the comments and see who wished Brendan a happy birthday because this would be very telling as to where he kind of stands in the comedy community, right? Let's see who wished him a happy birthday. I just, I just want to see, just to be curious. Chin Sui, welcome to the 40 Club. Right, the fact that Chin's... Anyway, let's continue. Uh, I don't know who this is. Heber Cannon, happy birthday, Baba. 
Another person here. Great time to retire from comedy. <laughs> Sorry. What's wrong with people, man? It's his birthday, bro. Like, what, what, why would you say that? So mean. Rain, the per, the, the company <gasps> responsible for keeping... That's a good... Oh, credit to Brendan. He's quite smart. A post he knows he's going to get a lot of engagement with because even if people don't like you, if you put happy birthday to me, no one's going to dislike or report it or like not leave comments. They're going to double tap. They're going to leave a comment just to be nice. So the fact that he, he, he wore a rain hoodie in maybe one of his most liked comments or liked posts is pretty smart. So that's good social media acting and managing or branding or influencing that he did there. So big up Brendan for knowing where his bread is buttered. The buttery bros, talking about bread. Happy birthday, legend. Allegedly, he's a legend. Cool. Makes sense. Everyone's a legend. Uh, let's move on. But I think they're Australian. That's probably why they said that, right? Are they Australian? Maybe. Who knows? Number one. 40 isn't that old, man. A lot of life to live. Uh, another person. Happy birthday, thick. Another person. Eat a solution to return certain problems. Make your employee sign the NDA. I'm shocked your attorneys have not suggested this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what has this got to do with his birthday post? This is so random. This sort of like, um, what's that thing called? This sort of like, you know, this, this just, yeah, anyway. Happy birthday, champ. Your fans love you from NFL to heavyweights to thick boy we ride. Um, all I'm wondering is how those AirPods are staying in. Oh, let's see if he liked, because he, again, he says he doesn't check social media. Do you like this comment? Because this seems like a comment he would like. Because it sounds very, very lovely. Do you like this comment? Let's see. I don't check social media. Oh, he didn't. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Another one here, Fight Companion. Brendan Shaw, happy birthday. Thanks for the laughs. You have lots of loyal fans. Don't give any of the trolls time or energy. Okay. Uh, welcome to 40 Cup. Okay, this just repeats. Why? Why is it not why is it not loading more comments? Or is it me, maybe me? Yeah, there we go. New ones here. From a scientific perspective, you should get a, a, a Cinnabon. This is so sweet. Happy fourth to you. Okay. Pumped for the stadium tour. <laughs> I don't know if that's a troll. Always rocking the Celtics gear. I dig it. 40 ain't shit, that's young, no fight companion, again, maybe a troll, why do you shave the best, po oh, <laughs> and you tagged him, why do you shave the part that connects your moustache to the rest of your beard, <laughs> why does this annoy people a lot, I've seen this before, like I said, I think this is him trying to copy David Beckham, David Beckham facial hair does is kind of similar, but that guy is so mean, man. It's like, it's his birthday. Like, just wish the guy happy birthday and keep it moving. Why are people like this? Where the sunglasses from, bro? Dem, what did you do on your birthday? Brendan, ruined the warranty on my underwear during my morning run. Okay. People trying to make laughy jokes of comedians on the... Yeah. There's nothing worse than civilians, as comedians have to say, trying to leave jokes underneath comedians' posts and stuff to get their attention. Like, please get a hobby. Please look after your kids. Please make a sandwich. Please go outside and touch grass. Anything but that. It's worse than those fucking Elon reply guys. That like, ugh. Happy birthday. Rain energy jacket thing is dope. Again, I don't know what. He, uh, happy Baba Rogan. But yeah. Anyway. Oh, happy. Hey, Baba Rogan left you hanging on your birthday, daddy. Okay, people are being mean. Jesus. Um, you can tell. You can tell. Cat's not there anymore, isn't it? And you can tell. Uh, what's his name? BGL isn't there either, either. Right. Look at all these negative troll comments that are still up on there. 20 hours later. When Kat was there, she was quick with the fucking deletion. So it's sad to see that happening. But hey, what can you do? Happy birthday to Brendan Shorp. Happy birthday to Brendan Shorp. And hope he's having an absolute lovely birthday. Hope he's having a lovely one. To celebrate the guy's birthday, I thought it would be nice to watch a clip of some of his best moments. And I think these compilations, for me, are the best example of maybe the best version of Brendan because they feature Fear Vaughn. And I feel like when Fear Vaughn left the Bupperverse, that was usually the, the demise of Brendan in general. But I feel like that beginning stage when Fear first came on the fire and the kid and they were having their little back and forth and Fear was the first part. Because again, at that time, remember this, right? Fear didn't know Brendan. So he didn't know it wasn't allowed to insult him. Like he's very thin skinned. It wasn't allowed to poke fun at him that much because he might see clamp you. So Theo came in hot. You look like a, you look like this, you look like that. And he got him out, you know, and, but then they went back and forth. And that's what, but that was the genesis of the King and the Sting original show, right? It was kind of like a roast type of topical show, whatever. And then it turned into just being another blog, another, you know, another podcast until it kind of got, you know, canned for the golden hour. But I felt like that was the best modern 
representation of Brendan. Like he was actually kind of likable when he was getting ridiculed, when he was laughing at himself, not taking himself too seriously and not being thin skinned. So this is a compilation taken from a channel called Chaddy Bobby Compilation that says funniest podcast moments, King in the Sting, fishing Fear of One and Brendan Shaw. I think this would be a good way to celebrate the guy's birthday. So happy birthday to Brendan. What um, the hell, man? <laughs> Get you off the wall. This is Bro, what are you shit talking drink. about? I think this is taking a fucking nap like a fucking gangster. Yeah, you wear a shirt like this and an energy drinks affect you? Fuck yeah, no. dude. Damn, bro. He said yeah. he'll take a nap after an energy drink. What's cold the hard thirty minute nap after a monster? Dude, I'll be terrified. Bro, first of all, a black guy that can't handle an energy drink is one of the <laughs> most questionable things I've ever heard of. Dude. How dare you not wear your Malibu rum tea up in this bitch? Bro, damn, bro, who you afraid of? The blood, the crypts? It's like, nah, man. Oh man, these night stalkers, dog. Yeah, that, the, that new Red Bull line. <laughs> And Brendan fucking over here talking shit, even though he's dressed like he's the captain of the Tony Roma's bowling team <laughs> over here. Damn. Dude, you look like shit, dude. Sweet. Yeah. I, I also, it was made me laugh, these clips, because Brendan's replies back, his clapbacks were so terrible. You look like a, you look like a, it was just terrible. Like, whereas Theo was getting very specific with these insults. Kind of far-fetched, but very specific. Whereas Brendan was a little bit like, you know, dude, have you seen what you're wearing? Dude, have you seen your hair? It's like, come on, man. Let's do some more. Dude, that's more, more. Sweet. That's the, that's a, the, that's a hacky sack. Hacky man. sack? Oh, yeah. Man. You get gotta a, not. Get a job, man. Well. <laughs> get, a, just get a job, boys. <laughs> Nothing. If, you're, if you're too good at hacky sack, you gotta get a job. Look how good Brendan looks back then. How long ago was this? Five years ago? Six years? Again, I know, I know I keep saying this, and I've made it a, a point to mention. Maybe it's a, it's a bit of a laugh and a joke, but it's actually kind of true. One of the reasons why I've decided to go in this kind of long, drawn-out sobriety until I decided to go a bit crazy again was because, you know, after doing these streams, a lot of these streams and realizing and watching the clips and watching some of my old clips beforehand and, you know, how I flip, how I, how even I ballooned up. And luckily, I don't have the flipping, you know, the alcohol being an issue, but just in terms of, you know, eating too many fucking muffins and croissants and shit. But watching Brendan's kind of, you know, body and face change over time mostly because of the fucking alcohol has been fucking wild to watch and look how handsome he looks here like when when joe rogan was saying oh you know people don't like at first but he used to say oh people don't like brendan because he's obviously really good looking and he could take your girl and beat you up and shit maybe this version of brendan cool you can maybe there's some reason to people to be like okay maybe people are hating him because of our jealousy or maybe because they he reminds them of a bully and whatever but now bamba He's a pet, like, he looks, fr like, he looks like he's showered here. His hair looks like it's got some gel in it or some spritz. He looks like he's got a bit of a tan on him. He might have done a bit of a facial. Like, he looks good. Like, look, his arms even. Like, everything looks tight, you know? But nowadays, like, God damn it, he looks so horrible, man. Oh, dude. Dude, it's basically, it's the baseball of co of community college, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude. Are we shooting? Let's shoot. Let's shoot, bro. Hey. As Lee Harvey Oswald would say, <laughs> <laughs> let's shoot. I love Brendan on the show. Always just, co just copy Theo. Whatever Theo said, copy, ad lib, add on. Bezos on TRT. Is he? Yeah, and Elon Musk created a flamethrower, bro. What's wrong with his tongue? Did, he, did his tongue get infected? But look, look how good he looks here. Look at that side profile. Look how good he looks. Even that, that mustache beard thing people hate. It actually looks good on him in this regard. It looks incredible. But dude, you got look. And he if, smokes weed. Papa. Elon Musk is about to have a small wiener if he's creating all of these things. Like usually, you buy a Trans Am, that means you got a small wiener. You know. Yeah. Usually, sure you buy a monster truck with eleven spare tires in the back of it. <laughs> means you got dick issues. Buzz, bro. buzz. It means you should fucking you got dick issues. Or the, Johnny the, fucking frostbite. The big racist uh, bird. The, uh, I, I, I said, come here, boy. You know <laughs> that one? That, dude. I, I said, come here, come in. Now I'm playing, boy. You know that one? Racism is that guy's name. Yeah, dude. just racism. <laughs> Sugar racism, yeah. Yeah, racism, dude, the bro. big bird. He looks like an Uber driver for Ichabod Crane, bro. Can you stand up, Chin? I want to see the full length. Will the real Chin please stand up? <laughs> chin Shady. We call him Chin Shady. Wow, man. Damn, Chin, I hope you get a date, bro. Dang, that jacket is... <laughs> if it doesn't work out, you get a job at the morgue. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> dude, yeah. Dude, check out his hair. No, he looks like the ghost of Penguin's past, bro. <laughs> That's what you look like, dude. Unbelievable. Dude, check out that earring. That <laughs> earring. Wow. Vanilla rice. <laughs> Bro, you look hey, unbelievable. Big trouble in Little Encino. What's happening? <laughs> no, Chen, I'm just joking, man. You look absolutely wonderful, hey, you dude. You look fucking dope, man. I okay. bet you get a date. Look how good he looks there. Look how good Brendan looks there. Honestly, if, if I know, again, I'm lucky. I'm really, really lucky in that I never was a big drinker anyway like drinking always was like attached to going out and doing drugs and stuff and raving so i'd always leave it for the weekend it wasn't like i was drinking beers at home and shit or having cocktails and whatnot i didn't really grow up in a family where we had like a bar like a, you know some people have like you know families dad will have like a little wine bar maybe that would make you like nick a little couple of swigs of vodka and shit so i'm lucky and also i didn't grow up in a small town where maybe you're really bored and you know all you have to do is take drugs and drink so i'm really lucky i really got lucky in that regard but if you are drinking a lot, you have to look at Brendan Shaw as a cautionary tale because this guy's a former athlete. He works as a podcaster, so he has all the benefits of making his own schedule, working when he wants. He makes tons of money, so you'd imagine the stress is somewhat alleviated in terms of like needing a drink. Like you know, most of us working people who work like myself who work like a nine to five. You know, the drink is like a signifier of like wrapping up the day. I remember I was speaking to a friend about the same sort of thing. Like the drinks are, have like a different relevance when you're working a regular job you don't really like it's like a way to you to like kind of like you know clock out to start your weekend to kind of forget the troubles he had in the day all that good stuff so but it's also it can invite like abuse because you're doing those things but you would imagine if you're those kind of guys there's no reason really maybe there's more because you've got more time but for a former athlete to to kind of you know go to deteriorate that's what i'm trying to say over such a short period of time Five years or something is insane to me. Insane. Insane. And again, remember, I was a former fan. So I remember the time when Brenner used to brag about not drinking. He used to wear it as a badge of honor that he's one of the comedians that doesn't stay out late, that doesn't drink. And that's why he's probably getting like ahead in comedy and booking loads of places and selling out because he's actually hustling and approaching it like an athlete, blah, 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 blah. But look how good he looks here. God damn it. Yeah, not this thick card catalog jockey over here. Brennan looks like <laughs> fucking some old woman who gave birth to do the Dewey Decimal System. Dude, Bro, like how, let's do something where we where we burn your uh, sweater and all of our grandparents come back to life. <laughs> Can we do that, bro? Oh, Brennan looks like a librarian who, uh, who knows how to work the lard catalog. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. The lard You look fucking... <laughs> You look so fucking flammable. <laughs> you look so flammable, bro. Do whatever you want. Yo, big up, Raichi, Richie, Raichi. I appreciate you, brother. Right. Yep. What else we got? We got do this, do that. We got another one, man. We got people send them in. This is Austin Pollard. It's going to be tough to beat that one. Yeah, nobody has a rap name, which is weird. Well, all we'll, just... give them, we'll give them rap names. <laughs> Let me hear him. Oh, he looks like he has beats. That's, that's little brows, bro. <laughs> Brows up, hose down. Brows up, hose down. <laughs> oh, is this how he started? I didn't know this law. Is that how Lil Brow started? I didn't know that law. That he started him being a calling, and then that's how he got featured. So that's how he got joined the team by doing this rap calling thing. Ah, and Brendan gave him the name. Okay, Lil Brow. <laughs> Get him, caterpillar eyes. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Look, You're Brendan mean, and Eo, fighter and Creole. Shout out New Orleans and shout out to Seal. Colorado, more specifically Boulder. Brendan came in with a chip on his shoulder, but it's still golden. Yet it's still fire. If you don't like King in this thing, you're a liar. Brendan's got like a thousand different hustles. One of them's at Nordstrom Rack doing tires. My friends can hear you loud and clear. Your son on the email, like, please get me out of here. You're watching the Irishman eating. People. Look at Brendan's face. I see money. I see virality. Oh, this is the origin story. Look at them. Look at look at that. Look at this. Look what a lovely moment, eh? Happy birthday, Brendan. If you if you love Brendan, and you want to wish you happy birthday. Let's get to the flipping birthday cake emojis in the chat. 
birthday cake emojis in the chat for Brendan's 40th birthday. Let's celebrate the guy's birthday. 40th uh, birthday. This is best moments. Come on. He's drinking half a beer. Not on the Theo Vaughn. Looking like this type of dude that tries to read a song. <laughs> snap back on. About to hit the crib and turn Snapchat on. It's all good. We still mess with you. 1800 Pico Boulevard. Go get that hit. Eric and Cat. Y'all doing great. Thursday upload. Not a minute late. Y'all wanted a rap. I had to demonstrate. Brand new studio. Y'all feeling great. Put Chris Delano in his place. <laughs> now let's go and get Chinna Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Come on, Yo, shit, bro. <laughs> dude, <laughs> Little Brows was wow. waiting, bro. Wow. You know, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Dropping. You dropped something, sir. Bars. That shit was hard, <laughs> dude. Was Damn, we're like. Bro, oh, it's the funniest thing Brennan's ever said. Hey, breakfast club now, bro. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yeah, you're, but, you're, but you ate all. That's the last time Brennan smiled for real, for real. The last time he actually smiled when Little Brows dropped a hot, fire hot freestyle. The breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> dude, we're breakfast club. <laughs> but you ate you're DJ. All. Eddie D's a hater. No happy B day for that redact, Bubba. <laughs> Eddie D's like, nah. Oh, actually, I want to... Yay! Big up Rishi Raishi for $25. Appreciate it, brother. Always fire, bro. This Appreciate one it. goes out to Bopper in that nasty brown sweater. <laughs> Big up Rishi Raishi for appreciate the $25, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, that, that sweater is fucking awful. Um, but yeah, he's a fashion guy, right? Always into fashion. Balls into fashion. Talking about birthdays, I want to know about you guys in the chat. Be honest. I don't know if you guys have the same thing, but you must do. Every workplace is the same. If you work in an office or even a store retail, sometimes... When it's someone's birthday, they'll pass around a card and everyone will sign it or leave them a message. And at the end of the day, they'll give them a bottle of wine. They might buy them a cake if they're a fat girl or some shit, whatever, right? Stumping it as whatever. And they'll handle the card. And it's nice for you to go home on the way home to read the card and see, oh, Susie said, call me. This guy says, eat my dick. That guy said, da, 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 da. It's quite nice to read the little messages, right? Sometimes I know some people, myself included, if I don't like the person, or if I don't speak to them at work, which is really rare because I speak to everybody, I'm a fucking chat box as you can tell, I won't sign it. <laughs> I'll just pass it along. And I think it's a really bad, it's a little, it's a really like, it's a kind of really hater thing to do. And it's a super microaggression. Do you, do you guys do it? Oh, you know, Koyla saying, I never signed the card. <laughs> exactly. Do you guys not sign cards if you don't like somebody? Or do you just sign it just to be nice? What do you guys do? If I don't like the person, I never sign the card. I'm like, fuck them. Like, you're, you're dead to me. <laughs> I don't sign it. I just pass it along. What do you guys do in the chat? If you don't like somebody, do you sign it just to be nice? Or do you just pass it along? Hell yeah. Never sign a card if I don't like them. Same. I did. <laughs> you got so many haters in the chat. That's just a shame. It's Brenda's birthday, man. Sign it. By putting the birthday cake emoji in the chat, you're signing his card. So if you don't, if you don't put birthday chat emojis, I'm assuming you don't sign. Say so yeah, people, I am saying I don't sign it. Stay away saying I've never really been in that situation, but I would pass on the card if I had an issue with the person. <laughs> Fucking hell. Rishi Raishi, I always sign, but I'll sign it as a janitor bapper. Yep. Net Hannah says I sign it if I don't like for sure. I don't ever give cards. I hate reading them myself and giving a fit. Yeah. No can <laughs> We don't do it at work. Um, it, Eddie D says it. I was hating on Sean before the Two Fat Reddit started to. Oh, rah! Eddie D's an OG hater. I was hating him before Two Fat Reddit. <laughs> okay, cool. Koilas are pretty enough. Sir. You know what? Actually, talking about hate, you know what? Eddie D, good point you made. I was super late. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. But I'm sure if I look back on my Reddit account, I've had a few Reddit accounts. But I think if I look back on my Reddit account, I can find Reddit accounts. Maybe I'll pull them up, actually. Maybe I'll pull up screenshots of my old Reddit account where I was defending Breden. I would go on the fire and the kid. This is when it was on Fox. Maybe it was the end of their Fox deal. And I didn't understand the hate. When the fire and the kid subreddit might have been like 5,000, 10,000 people. I'd be on there. Like, you guys are hating. He's not that bad. You're over-exaggerating. Brian is in on a joke. Brennan's not bullying him. He's not trying to be embarrassed. Like, I'd be defending the guys on there. Like, tick, 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 tick. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine. God almighty, mate. What a redact. What a redux. Anyway, let's continue. Hey, oh, eggs, bro. I'm Charlamagne. <laughs> no, dude. You're fucking a little scramble. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's who you are. Dude, you got to apologize to this guy. You went in little on brows him. Little brows is dope, yeah, though. Brows. His eyebrows are fucking sick, dude. Girls pay a lot of money. Look, that's not clowning him. Those bars. Dude, those... 
Those, really? You guys thought it was clown? Little brows? Little brows? That's a great. Dude, I'm little thick. He's yeah. little brows. What's up, dude? Dude, I don't know. You'd man. be the first guy signed to Shop Records. What's up, bro? Shop Records. Shop Records. Shop bro. Records, bro. Oh, I thought you said Shop Records. I thought you meant tow truck. No, dude. <laughs> Come on. Even for the haters. How much more likable is Brendan here than he was ever before? He's got two likable periods. Fox era of the fire and the kid where they're sitting on that table, facing the camera side by side. And this, the king of the sting, early days. When when Fear would rip him relentlessly and Brendan would like pretend not to be hurt because he's really thin skinned. This is the best version of Brendan Shaw, in my opinion. Funny, not taking stuff too personal. You know, being um trying to be funny off uh, off the cuff and shit, which is difficult for him because he doesn't really have the natural chops about it. But this is the best version of it, in my opinion. Let's <laughs> um, like death, bro, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, but with a little more death. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot more row. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chin looks like he's the lead security for Korean Zombie. <laughs> Right. He looks like, yeah, he looks like Gangnam out of style. <laughs> Gangnam style. <laughs> Gangnam style. Remember that little fat Dude. trick? <laughs> uh, yeah. And that little fucking egg Bro, roll? You mean Gangnam style. When, a man, when the world. Yeah, big up, Megan. Thank you. Oh, appreciate took advantage you. of a mentally handicapped Asian kid. <laughs> yeah, made him dance on YouTube. Wait, he was handicapped? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah boy, was a brick dog. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't natural Asian, bro. Oh. Ain't, glad to see you guys, man. Yeah. Don't touch yeah, but, me, dude. But keep because we can't. But, but we can. Yeah, you but know, we kind of can. Yeah. Don't <clears throat> touch me without gloves on, man. Dude, can I see that Gangnam Style video? I know Look we're at Chin, to... dude, huh? Jesus God, hey, Christ, Hey, Chin, bro. relax. <laughs> yeah, you, you look... He has a scarf with the mask. Scarf for later. You look like you're about okay. to rob a noodle bank. <laughs> <laughs> the best quote I ever heard about Comedy Central, Amy Schumer told me one time, she goes, if you gave them a gold brick, they would bronze it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just pissed. I had a good pilot with him, bro. That we worked really hard on. I him, saw. And it's hilarious. And I'll vouch with oh, you yeah, on this. I saw that. Theo's pilot, and, and I was like, "Dude, this can be the biggest thing you've ever done." And they said, "Nah." So this is my chance to say, "Fuck y'all." <laughs> <laughs> Man, isn't it interesting how Theo has never come back? Don't you find that interesting? They were really close at one time. They were doing the King and the Sting. He left to, for Passage New. He's now hanging out with Hollywood celebrities, you know, in talks of doing a show with flipping the UFC and some shit, clearly winning. Joe Rogan eulogizing about him on the... Every time I listen to Joe Rogan Experience, whenever Fio's name comes up, Joe is going overboard with the praise. He loves Fio. You know, he loves him. He's clearly an industry favorite. B booming. He hasn't come back once to check in on the boys on the Golden Hour to sit down with fucking Eric Griffin, the number one hater in the world. He hasn't come back ever since. Mad, isn't it? Like, he legitimately ran away from that guy. Ran away from him. Maybe not personally, because I remember Brendan mentioning, oh, he came and visited him once with his family and stuff, but he ran away, bro. Ran away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's still on flight. It's exactly. No, I, like, I love Theo, too. He's, he's amazing, but the way he ran away from Brendan is fucking epic, to be honest. He's never been seen ever since, like, fucking hell.